So, Andy, do you ever get writer's block? <laughs> Only when I'm standing on my head <laughs> t- talking to stupid reporters. <laughs> Welcome to the topsy-turvy, downright naughty, anarchist world of Andy Griffiths. The punk-rocking English teacher from Melbourne is the fastest and highest-selling author Australia has ever produced. Let's act real natural. Thank you very much. Andy's life is one long procession of elegant book launches. (laughs) That's right in my eye. Endless signings, polite enthusiasts. We've got an entire library here. Probing literary questions. And do you actually live in a treehouse? Get back. And intellectual exchanges with his audience. You're dead. Well, I'm dead. <laughs> yeah. We'll see who's dead, pal. I think it's just going to be a zap. His books might be low bra. Hey, I found another bit. But Andy and his equally silly drawing mate, Terry. Andy Griffiths, that's me. Oh, yeah, and Terry Denton. Are the envy of sophisticated authors all over the world. You've sold, I think, what, seven million copies around the world? You say million or billion? <laughs> <laughs> Working on the billion, yeah. <laughs> You're truly a naughty little boy, aren't you? <laughs> what Naughty Andy puts in his millions of books is why kids can't get enough. Deliciously disgusting, dangerous behaviour and occasional death. What do you love about the books so much? They're so funny and silly. How many of the Treehouse series have you read? All of them. All of them? Andy Griffith's career started at the bottom, literally. His brilliant idea was giving bums a voice in his books. The Day My Bum Went Psycho at the time was the wackiest title I could think of for a book. But as I came to the end of that book, another title just came into my head, Zombie Bums from Uranus. And then there was a third book, Bumageddon, the final Pong flick. (laughs) And kids loved you for it. Yeah, both became New York Times bestsellers. Fifteen years after bums took over the world, Andy Griffiths enjoys a very comfortable life with his teenage daughter Sarah and wife Jill, who's his long-suffering editor. Sarah, be careful. Don't cut the tops of your fingers off, OK? But bottom line, he's more like an annoying little brother than a dad. Yes, yes, excellent. Can go somewhere else in the kitchen? <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe Jill needs some help. <laughs> Emboldened by the booming bum books, Andy wrote The Bad Book in 2004. The old lady who swallowed a poo. A celebration of all things dirty, dangerous and disgusting. Perhaps she'll spew. Like The Bad Book is like an atomic bomb of uncontrolled madness. There's a lot of rhymes there that kids love and I've often recited. Hey diddle diddle, the cat did a piddle, the cow did a poo on the moon. The little dog baffed to see such fun, then ate it all up with a spoon. (laughs) Predictably, the moral minority had a heart attack. People are killed, people are blowing up, animals are burnt, and I just don't think that we need any more violence than um, than we're already seeing. Well, a number of libraries refused to stock it, a number of booksellers refused to sell it. Just because it was called the bad book? Well, because of the stuff in it, you know. There's there's kids running across the road without looking. There's a little old lady who swallowed a poo. So you got banned? Yeah. I was pretty happy about it, (laughs) I must say. The bad book is on the nose with some retailers who are refusing to sell it. Even shoved into bookshop back rooms, sales went through the roof. What do you think of that claim that writing something about a child, doing something horrible to another child, might incite that child to do it? I don't accept it at all because children read a book knowing that it's an imaginary game and they delight in it because it's not real life. And if you don't have danger or bad stuff happening in a story, you don't have the opportunity for heroic or courageous or inventive action to solve it. So that's why we need these things. And if we try to write stories that are all light and beauty and kittens, puppies and ponies, those kids are going to walk away and they'll find it somewhere else. 
And it works. Millions of kids who were once not reading are now reading Andy. My dad was too mean to build me a treehouse. His wife and editor, Jill, says Andy's comedy is actually critical to solving a very serious problem. It's also true that a little brother can live for nine days without his head. So. The disturbing number of high school kids who still can't read properly. The figures for Australia for kids aged 15 are disgusting. Mm. I think probably a lot of that could be the stuff that they're given to read in primary school. Because you talk to any parent, they'll say, oh, those readers, those diabolical readers. They're tedious, you know, aren't they're they? They're tedious. There's no pleasure. There's no delight. There's no story half the time. You know, there's nothing for them in those books. Aha, so this is the Andy Treehouse. This is it. For the first time, Andy's giving us a sneak peek inside his weird little work world. Oh, what a great playroom, Andy. I'd never I do know. any work in a place like this. <laughs> well, that's part of the secret, is, is <laughs> it's not work, it's play. This is where he's written the astonishingly successful Treehouse series, now translated into 21 languages. This is our headquarters where we write books or we try to write books and we're continually adding new levels of, um, of amazement and wonder and danger. So a big bowling ball with some guy squashed underneath it? Yep. It's also where we meet Terry Denton, Andy's illustrator and another frequent character in the books. Looks like you. <laughs> Theirs is a collaboration <laughs> laced with madness. Put pants on him. <laughs> and this is a rare glimpse of how Australia's best-selling buddies work their magic. What ball would cows be playing? At a ball? <laughs> when Andy puts something down, I can see where he's coming from immediately. It's, it's just simple. When he talks, the pictures emerge in my head. It's, it's like we were actually separated at birth in some way um, because we're just following that same path. So maybe we just show him fiddling with the buttons. It's been an interesting journey to the top of the treehouse for Andy Griffiths. Blur. Yeah, that's good. As an early reader himself, by his teens, Andy was a keen punk with his own band. I loved all forms of loud, obnoxious music and punk rock was, like, the best. I'm trying to get the names of your bands. There was the Gothic Farmyard and Skippy the Butcher. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you were the lead singer, weren't you? I call myself a vocalist because technically I can't sing a note. <laughs> From flailing punk rocker to rocking writer, Andy has silenced his critics with his global success. Wow, here you all are. This is obviously the cover of the new book. What do you think? Daughter Sarah is the road tester. I'm bored. OK. I'm the chairman of the board. It's pushing it. <laughs> it really is pushing it. You're tough. Is it surprising to Thanks. you that your dad is a star to thousands, hundreds of thousands of school yeah. kids. Oh yeah, it's it's very funny because um, I just think of him as you know the guy that's really annoying around the house and tells terrible dad jokes. Is it a bit embarrassing? Well, I've never had any other dad, so you know I don't really know what it's like to have a normal dad. There you are. Have fun in the Shark Tank, or be thereby solemnly reopened for business. His fanatical fans are already smashing their piggy banks for the next Andy Griffiths book. There's a new one coming out called The 78 Story Treehouse. What's in it? Do you know what's in I've it? I've seen it today. I could have sold that information. As the marathon of writing the next Treehouse book unfolds, Andy trains for one of his many triathlons, getting fit for another international book tour.
I'm very happy for you, but... Can I speak for all aspiring authors and say you are a complete bastard? <laughs> <laughs> We're all jealous. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry about that, but, you know, you just got to put more absurdity and, uh, and stupidity into your books. Priceless advice from our most successful anarchist author. Did you ever, in your wildest dreams, when you were thinking, I can write a better book, think that this would happen? Not at this level. I was happy to sell enough books to just pay my rent and buy some food so I could keep writing my absurd books. That was my idea of success. So everything that's come after it is an absolute bonus. So it's you're absolute. happy being the Johnny Rotten of children's literature? I'm very happy, mm. very happy. Hello, I'm Alison Langdon. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.